Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of the First Presbyterian Church, Eufaula, Alabama.
same time, the Lord comes and rescues us from danger, interposed his precious blood. So let us approach the throne of God with confidence, knowing that our Lord loves us and will forgive us. We will pray first the prayer of confession, and then we will pray silently our personal prayers. Let us pray together. O oh God, we are more like the vision in Luke than the vision of Isaiah. 
We see wars, hatred, and violence everywhere, yet despair of ever stopping them. We see oppression and injustice and persecution, but fail to raise our voices in prophetic protest. We have become a pessimistic people. Help us believe, really believe, in Isaiah's vision of the peaceable kingdom, in your promise of a new heaven and a new earth. Let your cry be our cry. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. Amen. God is our strength and our salvation. God's anger is turned away, and in its place we find comfort, steadfast love, and forgiveness. With this hope, we can draw water from the wells of salvation with joy and thanksgiving. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Amen Please be seated
Let us pray together. Lord, open our ears that we may hear the voices that you sing clear to us today. That your spirit may move in this room and in our hearts to make us disciples of you, to go out and do your work as you would call us to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. We will read chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. Let's hear the story of the temple. Please stand as we read the Gospel. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you the words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. Amen. Please be seated. Our New Testament reading comes from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. It is the first of the two letters. Verses, we will read chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. Let us hear Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor, we worked night and day so that we might not be a burden to you. This was not because we did not have the right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now, Such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. God always blesses the reading and the hearing of his most precious word. Let us pray together. Lord, remind us to look at the context in which others hear, others say, others see the world. 
that we may be understanding of how to minister to them and how you can minister to us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be worthy and acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, what a week, huh? I mean, I mean, I was sick last Sunday, so I was laying in the office while y'all were worshiping. But I sure didn't see this coming. I don't know if y'all did, but y'all would be one of the few. And I want to talk about it a little bit. Now, I want to step on, try not to step on toes, I should say, but, but Karl Barth, I don't know who, y'all know who Karl Barth is. Karl Barth was a German theologian in the mid-20th century. He had a painting in his office, and I may have told this story in the four or five times I've preached here so far because it's, it's a good story, but he had a painting in his office of Martin Luther, and Luther had two things in his hands. In the right hand, he had the Bible. In his left hand, he had a newspaper. Now, most of us probably don't even read newspapers anymore. We probably would have an iPad or an iPhone in our other hand that would tell us the news of the world. But Bart's point with the painting in his office is that we can't minister to people unless we minister to them where they are, what is happening around them. And there's nothing bigger or more important happening around us right now than the presidential election from last week. Now, I don't want to say necessarily where I was in this or how I feel about it because I want to be able to address all of us regardless of where we are with the results of what happened. But the importance to understand this election and why it happened is to understand setting. Setting is everything. We have a country that is radically divided between the east and west coast and what's in between. We do. The people on the east and west coast, all the people you see in the media, all the people, I listen to podcasts, I listen to a podcast that has two rather liberal um, political operatives who do this podcast, and they had a basic misunderstanding of what is happening in the heartland of our country. Setting is everything in understanding things. And so we read this passage from Paul and Silas. Paul today, it's Paul and Silas together, but Paul wrote it <coughs> when he's writing to a church in Thessalonica. Now this, again, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, is the earliest book that was written in the New Testament. It was written in about 47 AD, about 15 or so, 14 years after the death of Christ. And Paul has visited this little town and he's set up a church but what's happening in the church is bothering him. But what's happening in the church is not what we would think is happening in the church because we hear the term, and I want to make sure I say the term exactly right in the reading. We hear the term, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. <coughs> now that goes against most of what the Bible teaches us about trying to help the widow and the orphan and the stranger in our lands. But what the setting matters in understanding the saying. Because what's happening in the church in Thessalonica is that they think that Jesus is coming back any day now. They are an eschatological church is what the term would be. They think that it's the second coming, Jesus is returning any day, any time now. And so these people are stopping their lives because they're just waiting for that to happen and then everything's going to be done. <clears throat> and so this is the setting that Paul is writing to. Paul is writing to these people to implore them to go back to work, to go back to living their regular lives because it could be tomorrow, but it could be 10 years, or as we've seen, it could be 2,000 years. They stop not because they're lazy, not because they can't, not because they don't even want to. They just think that there's no reason left to. So Paul reminds them 
that you have to keep going. You have to live your life day by day regardless of what the setting is. <coughs> now, I had the opportunity about three or four years ago to go to Montreat. And actually, for about five years in a row, I got to go to Montreat with the youth in North Alabama when I lived up there. And the year that, that I'm talking about, about four years ago, a guy named Paul Roberts was preaching. Now, Paul Roberts is the president of Johnston C. Smith Theological Seminary in Atlanta. It is one of the 15, I think, seminaries in our denomination. It is a historically African-American seminary. <clears throat> and Paul was preaching. Uh, Dr. Roberts, I should say. I've met him. He's a great guy. My two sons, who are 17 and 14 right now, Jack was 14, so it had to be three years ago. Jack was a freshman in high school. Teddy at the time was a fifth grader or sixth grader, sixth grader. And he was there with his mom because his mom's youth group was also there that week that I was as well. That sermon happened three years ago. My sons still talk about it. I know how many sermons y'all have heard in your life, but how many of them are you talking about three, four, five years later? Well, Paul Roberts delivers this sermon, and it's about finding Nemo. I don't know if y'all have ever seen Finding Nemo, but Dory, which they had just had a sequel this year, Dory had one theme, one thing she said over and over and over to herself. Does anybody remember it? Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. And so, Ms. Mr. Roberts spends this 20-minute sermon talking about those three words, just keep swimming. Bad things happen. Life throws us curveballs. Things happen we don't want to happen. We have to just keep swimming. The people in Thessalonica think the world's going to end. They stop working. Paul writes them back, just keep swimming. You've got to keep going. You have to live your life. You have to go to work. You have to take care of yourself. You have to keep going. Paul and Silas go to this place and they lived in Thessalonica for probably about eight months. Paul usually spent four to six months, but he spent a little bit longer in Thessalonica to help set their church up. Notice he said, we worked every day. Paul was a tent maker. That's where the term tent maker in the church comes from to this day. People who work one job and also work in the church. Paul made tents. He sold them. He provided for himself while he was ministering. But the churches were supposed to be providing for each other. But Thessalonica had stopped working. They'd stopped doing their work. So the point that Paul's trying to make in this passage is not don't take care of those who aren't doing things. It's that you've got to keep going. You've got to keep swimming. And so the question I have for us is one, wherever we are, pro or con, how the election turned out, we have to keep swimming. We have to keep going. We have to keep doing the work of God regardless of if we agree or disagree on what the culture says the work of God is. But then, even further, is who should we be for this church? What work do we have to do? What is God calling us to? Next Sunday is Stewardship Sunday. And we think of stewardship in terms of pledges of money. But that's not what stewardship really is. Stewardship is how do I give what I have to the church so that the church can do the work of God. Some of us may have more money than others and that's what we can give. Some of us may have time, more time than others. And we can give that time. Some of us may have more talents than others, and we can give those talents 
to what the church needs. But all of us have to keep swimming. So I ask as we go through this week, as we move towards next Sunday, we move towards Advent, we move towards a new year. What is God calling us to do? What work is God calling us to? Individually, as far as time and talents, but also as a congregation. How are we going to help others to just keep swimming? Because notice that Dory never swims alone. Nemo's there, and others are there as well. And that's what we as a congregation are called to do, is to help each other just keep swimming. Let us pray together. Lord, as we move to Stewardship Sunday next week, put on our hearts what we can give to this church so that we may go do your work, that we may love others, to seek justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
we come together asking that you give us strength to speak out, to give us strength to understand, to give us strength to listen. We may understand each other. Lord, we ask today that you be with those in our congregation who are hurting. who are fearful, who are excited, who are understanding, and who are in poor health. We pray specifically for Grady, Betty, Renee, Tony, Lucille, Madison, Ava, Lucy, Gabe, Emma, Karen, Brooke, Richard, Stephen, Harry, Jane, Mary, Jim, Lynette, Spencer, and Sue. Be with them. Give them strength. Heal them in ways that only you can and that only you can understand. And most of all, give them hope. Hope in you, hope in life, and hope in the resurrection to come. We pray for our two missionary families, the Zamor Zamoranos and the Kay family, that you are with them, giving them strength and giving them wisdom. We also pray for those who serve in our military, Reed, Lamar, Brooks, and Taylor, that they will feel your love and protection around them as they serve and protect our freedoms that we get received for living in this wonderful country. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, <clears throat> God calls us to give of our time and our talents. And God has given us so much already. So let us receive God's tithes and our offerings.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Lord, take these gifts, bless them, use them, move them throughout the community, in this state, in this country, in this world, so that your spirit may be known, your son may be known, and you may be known among us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. <coughs> if you leave. By the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them, they turn away. <coughs> Give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide. Till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I am calling in the Please be seated. I was given a cheat sheet for the congregational meeting, which I left in the office, so we're just going to wing it. Um, I noticed that a quorum is present, and so I will call the meeting to order. Let us pray. Lord, we have been called here today to elect officers, so we ask that your wisdom be given to us so that we will know the way we should go as a church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, I will ask the clerk of session if she would read off the nominations, please.
Seeing as it comes from the nominating committee, it does not need a second. Now the floor is open for any other nominations. Are there any nominations from the floor today? Seeing as there is none, all in favor of the slate of officers, please say aye. aye. Any opposed? So moved. Those are your nominate. Those are your officers for the coming year. Um, since there is no other business for this congregational meeting, I will take a motion to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? You have been viewing the Sunday morning worship service from the First Presbyterian Church, Eufaula, Alabama. The First Presbyterian Church is located in Eufaula, Alabama at 201 North Randolph Avenue, Eufaula, Alabama 36027. The church phone is 334-687-2523. That number again, 334-687-2523.
of God, come and celebrate God's gift of salvation. We come without fear. We come trusting in God. Come, people of God, hear God's promises and witness God's mighty deeds. Hear the name of God's Come, let us worship and praise God. 